Okay, Sunday, November 25th, back at Cantor's here. I'm Today I'm here with Eli James here. Eli, thanks for coming out. Yeah, for sure, man. All right, man. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, no problem, no problem. Um, you are right now, from all the people I've interviewed, are one of the most busiest people out there, dude. It oh. seems like. I mean, when I'm at Facebook, I see you're, you're, one day you're here in LA, and the next thing you're in Europe again, and stuff like that. Yeah. I yeah. mean, uh, you just came, in fact, right now, what, you just came back from Europe? From yeah, I just, I just finished a, um, actually it was two, two tours in Europe. One was a headlining sh uh, tour with Julian K, and I drummed for Julian K. And then the other one was with Julian K, but we jumped on with MSI. And M MSI is Miley Self Indulgence. They're like a, uh, a very heavy electro uh, band as well, but kind of like from the orgy days, like in 99, 2000. They started before then, but that's kind of when they're they're bigger. Mm -hmm. And then all the way to now, but yeah, we we uh, we it was amazing, all of Europe. And then we yeah we went up through. Finland and through all of uh, you know Stockholm and and Oslo or whatever and, and Sweden and I mean all of Germany and yeah it was great Paris was amazing Amsterdam was awesome the UK was amazing nice very nice yeah how long have you been with the Julian K um basically we we started maybe like a year ago or something like Good. that yeah probably uh, about eight months ago I I actually met the guys in December of last year. Nine, wait, that would make it 11 months ago. Yes. <laughs> okay. But if the, uh, things are moving too fast. Yeah. Um, I met him 11 months ago, and we did a, a music video and hung out for a while. And, and Frank drums with them too. So you know, when he's when he's not busy, he'll drum with them. And then when I'm not busy, I'll drum with them. And mm -hmm. so there's kind of two two drummers, killer drum. He's a killer drummer as well. So. We just kind of shift our schedule, so I, I don't exactly know how to answer that question other than the fact that it's roughly like I've, I've, we've been bros for like eight, eight months to a year. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty amazing, yeah. Because in fact, the first time I met you, you were drumming with uh, Bear Mesmer. Yep. And that's how I caught you and stuff like that. So, yeah. So, I mean, what other projects have you been, you know, dealt with? Um, well, just within like a year and a half uh, is a band called Viva City. They're from the UK. They're amazing. Um, I did a US tour with them last year as their drummer while I did the Eli James experience. And um, we both went out together. So we co-headlined the US together. And then from the dark, and the dark is you know a coffin case, uh, you know artist, and and um, they're kind of like more of like a Marilyn Manson type of a feel. It's, huh? it's amazing. They're they're great great guys. Um, and then I met Vera Mesmer for there, so I did Vera Mesmer and Julian K. Um, and that's just like within like you know, I guess a year and a half or something like that. Um, I also drummed in a music video with September Morning recently, um, and that's out now. They're like a heavier band too. Yeah. So another like, I think they're. I don't know if they're Coffin Case artists, but they're like with that same same group. Yeah. Yeah. Like a month ago, I did an interview with Emily. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, she's awesome. Yeah. She's so killer. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice girl. And stuff. Yeah. In fact, I just saw their show. They opened up with the Butcher Babies recently. Too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I know all those guys. They're great. Uh, Actually, uh, Brent Ashley, amazing bass player. Um, he, him, myself, um, and a couple other people uh, were in the music video uh, with Emily for that. But the funny thing is, is the the uh, music director uh, Vicente. He's a he's an amazing director. Him and his brother, just a crew, like a wrecking crew. They actually did Bear Mesmer, mm -hmm. their music video. Jumped and did. Uh, Julian K, the one that I was in. Yeah. I referred him to Johnny Coffin and the Coffin Case crew. And they just then they did uh, September Morning, and they're doing a one for the Dark now. And they did another one I think for Julian K. And they're just like they're just going like they're super busy too. Wow. I can't even keep yeah. up with their schedule. Wow. But that's how that that's how that happened. Very yeah. cool. That's interesting. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, and I think uh, I produced a couple other artists. Um, this year as well, but I didn't. I mean, didn't necessarily drum for them, but they yeah. were in the Eli James experience, so mm -hmm. they they come on stage and we do all that stuff. Okay. Well, like I said, you got your hands full because right yeah. after this, you're going to rehearsal, right, with another project, right? Yeah. Well, actually, today I go down to Julian K's, and I I, I uh, uh, actually a mirror from oh, Julian okay. K. 
and we we jump in the studio with a couple remixes and a couple more song ideas, mm -hmm. and then tomorrow starts rehearsals for uh, Deuce, um, and Deuce is, we have a tour in, in December for the U.S. with uh, New Medicine. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's it's jumping jumping all over the place. Okay. Okay, because you being a drummer, I mean, how did how did you come about this? What led you into music? Uh, well, originally, um, I guess when I was three years old, um, my dad comes from music as well. He's a bass player, he's a writer, he's, he's a musician. He's, he's uh, actually started off drums, then went to guitar, phenomenal guitar player, and then went bass and so was singing and stuff. But he was in a kind of like a metal hair band mm -hmm. back in the 80s called Rottweiler, which is actually a, an amazing project. But it was like them and a, a band called Metal Church, which kind of yeah. came from the same era, same time. Uh -huh. My dad did a whole bunch of metal fests and stuff. But when I was three, I used to sleep in the, in their um, in their studios and like right when they're playing, and I was just like, yeah, hey, I'd sleep there. And, and like even no matter how loud it got or whatever, it just kind of felt comforting. So then, um, uh, when I was three, uh, I knew I wanted a drum, but when I was five, I, vo I kind of voiced it. And I, I went to my dad's drummer, and I, I looked at him while I was drumming, I was like, wow, I was like, that's what I want to do, I want to do that. He looked at me and he goes, well, what about what your dad's doing? And I looked at my dad and he looked at me and I'm like, no, I want to do what you do, I want to drum. So ever since then, I was like, you know, banging on buckets and things around the house and by, I think I was 12 years old, um, a friend of the family's, they were really close to us, they knew that I wanted a drum, so they sold their car to buy my first Ludwig set, it was a yeah, 1966 Ludwig, it was all sparkle blue and everything, and that's when I first had my first drum set when I was 12, and just played it ever since, basically. Wow, that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> who, are, who are some of your influences that you look up to or that kind of inspire you? Um, actually, to be honest, um, is Animal is one of my my biggest inspirations. Not gonna lie, <laughs> Animal from Muppet Babies. Um, and in real life, I guess um, there's there's a couple ways I look at it because you know you. To me, there's a showmanship, mm -hmm. and then there's there's professionalism. There's both together, and then there's technical skill. You know, Neil Peart is more of a technical drummer that I really look up to and admire. I mean, I can go. There's a list of a billion behind them. Yeah. Um, uh, showmanship wise. Um, Let's see, is Travis Barker, and there's actually another drummer too, his name's Joe Letts, mm -hmm. and he's from a band called Combi Christ, but I guess throughout the couple, last couple years, I've been being referred to him, and he's been referred to me, and, and you know, like, well, who is this guy, you know, I was checking him out, and he's, a, he's one of the most amazing drummers, live drummers that you'll ever, you'll ever see, Joe Letts, yeah, so he's a huge inspiration to me as well. Okay, very cool, very cool. Um, what's the gear that you're using right now? Is there a particular brand that you're endorsed by, or that um, well, let's see. I'm in, I'm endorsed by um, uh, by Risen Drums, mm -hmm. and they have the elect like it's a well, they have a whole bunch of different stuff, but that's that's where I got my my LED drum kit made from, um, and I'm endorsed through him, and then I'm also endorsed through um, a lighting company uh, called Adam Williams Presents. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's one of my closest buddies. He, him, and I came up with the lit up drum kit idea, um, and then I searched online forever and found someone that could actually do it. We went to him and we said, "Hey, this is what we want to do," and he's like, "Cool, let's work it out." And we worked it all out. Um, so, excuse me, but we went back and forth through that. So, drum wise, is that then? I, then I I use DW five thousands for my kick pedals. Um, and then I use um, I use a couple different symbols and, and things like that. Just I actually like using a whole bunch of different styles of symbols, as weird as it is, and mix and match. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean you know um, that's kind of what I use, I guess. I don't know. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, not really a brand on the symbols yet. I'm still trying to. Because see, here's the thing: is as you drum for so many different kinds of things, right? So you, you drum as a rock drummer mm -hmm. in a rock band. You need different cymbals and different sounds rather than if you were to drum for uh, like an electro group. Mm -hmm. Electro group, you want fast and, and like just it hits the cymbal. It's bright, simple, done, yeah. and done. Because there's no, it's just that it's simple. Yeah. And as rock, there's a whole 
different elements and you know um, that you need on cymbal wise and, and, and it's just completely different whether it's heavier or lighter or thinner or faster and you might need all of them you know? mm -hmm. so that's kind of where I'm like well I drum for electro club dance rock hip hop and all it all and you, you kind of need different styles yeah. for different things so that's kind of why well, it makes sense it makes sense yeah um, I already forgot my question. Oh no, it's okay. <laughs> I'm trying to wrap. Um, okay, we went over your influences real quick. Um, uh huh. If um, somebody new was trying to start out, like band or whatever, what would be something that you would advise them on? You know, in the you know to get get going. What would be something that you would advice you would give somebody out new in the industry? Well, if, if someone's going to say, "Hey, I want to start a band," I'd say, "Get up and do it." That, that's that's it. If they're like, well, I need help and I, I don't know what to do or whatever and something like that, you go, okay, well, you know, depending on what you are, are you a singer, are you a drummer, are you a bass player, whatever it is, is just get up and outflow. Like, kind of go connect the dots with people and, and go to shows and find out what you're influenced by. And if you already have a band and you want to just get, get up and go, I guess, mm -hmm. is start calling every promoter that you know that does a night that is kind of like based up your music whether it's rock or whether it's electro or whether it's just a DJ night you look at what's going on around your neighborhood and further and find out what kind of nights there are then you, you I reach out to all those promoters and then try to get it on a show because that's that's the type of music they, they promote yeah well I, I mean Nowadays, it seems like music has changed a lot. I mean, yeah, there's uh, no money in the music anymore. <laughs> Pretty, much. it seems like it, and everything like yeah. that. I mean, like when I was growing up, like during the times we had our record stores, you know, bands put out records, and yeah. we have all these things now. Everything's online. I mean, it seems like it's so much harder and stuff like that. You, as a musician, and everything like that. How are you going about to getting yourself heard? You know, what, do you, what are the things you're taking? Um, honestly, it's, it's it's social media now. I guess where the mistake came from in the labels well let, let's start it off this way first off it back in the day I mean yeah you got you got a paycheck from the labels but that doesn't mean you didn't get screwed you know and, and then on top of that they had control so because they had control and who can get what and where it goes and all that stuff it made it a lot easier to make a living at it whether you're screwed or not type of thing Nowadays, um, seeing as when the internet really phased in and people can take whatever they want whenever they want, your your biggest bet is to do shows, is to get out and play, is to go tour. Um, people will buy your music when you go tour. Pe people will buy music if they're fully a music supporter. You know what I mean? Like you'd have a friend. You can give them a track, but they don't want it. They want to pay for the track mm -hmm. because that's something. It's like a normal job. It's like being a construct in construction. You build a house. You don't build it for free. No. You know what I mean? You build you build the structure of a song. You do a song. You shouldn't be doing it for free. But nowadays, it's so easy to take that you just never know. So the best thing and best advice I say is to go go out and play shows. Once you play shows and build your your rapport, it's not going to come fast. No. It might take three years. It might take ten. Years. It might take 15 years or beyond. It might take one year. It might take 10 days. Because it, nobody knows how fast it is. Just as long as you get out and do your art, mm -hmm. then you can get out on the road and start making money. Yeah. It also depends on if you have an investor behind you or not. If you have an investor behind you, you're not making money. They got to make money back. They can they can float your money yeah. to pay your bills, so you can do what you do, and that would be a blessing. But um, that then it's on them to make the money back, and that you know, nobody nobody knows without going out and doing and getting guarantees. That's why DJing, in my opinion, you make so much money out. Of it. If someone shows up under a name, the name will pull kids, the promoters can afford the artist that's there. Well, you do the same thing with a band, but as a DJ, there's a lot less expense than a band has. A band has four, five, six people, sometimes two, sometimes more. You gotta afford all of them, you gotta afford all their roadies, you gotta afford all their gear, you gotta afford the gas to get all the gear to the place. As a DJ, you, you fly one place, fly the next, take a bus and stuff like that. Not saying it's easy, yeah, but it's easier, you know. So it depends on what you're at and where you want to go. Yeah, that's true. That's true. 
So far, that any of the tours that you've done, has there any been a tour that's really stood out, you know, in memory going that you, you'll cherish? I think every tour is like that, to be completely honest. Um, there's never really a tour, in, in my opinion, that doesn't stand out. Because you, you find new things and there's new experiences along every way. You're in new places, you connect with new everything. Everything's new, you know. You might go somewhere and you've been there before, but you're making new friends, you talk to your old friends, you hang out at their place now instead of a hotel because you have friends. Mm -hmm. And to every every single one has like a memorable mark. But you can, you know, you can always go, well, which, what's the one that I enjoyed the most? Or what's the one that, that um, you know, I guess you've had the funnest at and stuff yeah. like that? Um, and for me, there, for me, there's two of them. One is my first Eli James Experience tour. Um, and that's because I just went out and did it myself. Mm -hmm. I was in a band, I, my own band. I wrapped it with my name, retarded enough. I put all my gear in there. I had a futon, and it was me. And I'm on the road. And I load my gear in, load my gear out. I, I get paid nothing. I kind of scramble on food here and there. I try to sell my merch, and that is so memorable because it's the start of what I have now. Um, and then the last, my last tour is absolutely amazing because that's like, uh, I mean, with Julian Kay, I mean, those guys, to be honest, are, they're legendary in themselves, you know, and what they've done, you know. Yeah. Like Amir from Rough Cut all the way through his career to Orgy days to Julian Kay to Dead by Sunrise. And same same thing with Ryan who wrote uh, Blind uh, for Corn mm -hmm. when they first came out and then joined Orgy and his whole road to Julian K and everything. And those guys are brothers to me and they're they're honestly some of the most honest and goodwill people that I've met in the industry so far. A lot of people are like that, that you kind of surround yourself, they're very honest, but then you'll find some people that you're just like, wow, you're out for yourself and, you know, yeah, that's right. the end of that. But I, I totally hear you. I understand that and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now here's the little flip side to that okay. question, of course. Has there been any one of those little embarrassing moments or kind of like, oh my God, that just happened, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Well, there's, there's a lot of those, that's for sure. Um, you know, it's actually interesting is, is um, when you go out and, and you just try to make it happen and you play in front of zero people or the bartender, I guess would say, and you're, you're just going out there and giving it your all and all you hear is like, you know, <laughs> cricket, cricket, clap, clap. As much of that as an artist goes through, I don't even know how they survive, but those are the funny points in my, like, I guess in my experiences that I'm like, oh my God, that just, it's just like... Am I really doing this? You know, uh -huh. type of thing. <laughs> um, yeah, there's. I mean, there's a lot of funny, funny moments. You know, and like you get stopped at a border and you got to wait for a million hours because you know they want to sh search everything inside and out of you yeah. and all your gear and for no reason. And you know, and you're like, well, I'm late for the. You know, I'm late for <laughs> loading. I gotta, gotta play this show and then hopping and jumping around on everything that you can just to get to the show. But you know, <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Um, one song, one question I always like to try to ask people and everything like that, with all the music that's been written, it doesn't matter what genre it's in or what time it was written and everything like that, is there one song that might, or a couple of songs that might be particular in your mind that you were saying, I wish I would have been the writer on that song? Oh, wow, that's actually a really good question. Um, I've actually never thought of it like that. But if there was... If there was a couple of songs that would stick out, shoot, man. Actually, I, I from uh, one from Three Dog Night, maybe would be a good one. Mm -hmm. um, See, there's different reasons. Uh -huh. I would say this. Okay, there's different reasons for this question to be answered whatever way. That's cool. One is success mm -hmm. and money. Yes. So you're going, okay, Thriller. Of course. Yeah. I would love to be the writer on Thriller. You know, then there's the art, art side of things, you know, where you, you say, you know, um, 
any pick any Beatles song, you know, because at that time, mm -hmm. pretty much everything they did is different, mm -hmm. you know. And you're like, okay, cool, or like, you know, a Pink Floyd song, or Nine Inch Nails, or Depeche Mode, or something like that. Or, you know, you're like, I wish I, that I, I was a part of that. You know what I mean? So it's it's kind of like, well, there's two answers to that question. Yeah. And I think I just gave it. Gave it the best. <laughs> I don't know. Pretty much. I mean, I, I've had people say that they're like. Some try to pick it from a point of being like a fan of music or something like that, but a lot of them also saying, well, there's the money factor, yeah. and then there's the artist factor. And, yeah. and it makes sense, too, because yeah. you're like, you're caught between. You'd like to have written that one because, yeah, that generated a lot of money. Yeah. And then there's some because I really like that song for the words or yeah. just something about it. Yeah. Like that, so. That's that's where I go. Because it, yeah. it's like, well, there's two ways to answer yeah. that question. But yeah, but I mean, you know, if I could have been helped... You know, Trent Reznor and and um, you know Sean Bevan put together some of Nine Inch Nails. Oh my God, that'd have been great. I love that. That's the like, Depeche Mode. Nine Inch Nails are like my influences as a writer. Same with like IMX and Sneaker Pimps and things like that. Yeah. Well, on the other side of things is like even though they made a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but the other side of things is like we want to be known as like an Elvis or whatever as an artist, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, wow, that, that's cool. I'm an icon, I guess, you know? Yeah. That'd be cool. Um, and just for fun, you know? And so that you pick those songs as, as that side. So, yeah. I don't know. Um, you've already worked with an amazing group of people already like that. Was there somebody maybe still that you would really like to maybe at least try to collaborate with or write a song with out there? Yeah, I mean, there's always... I, 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 I mean, the ocean of musicians is, yeah. like, retardedly humongous. And working with different artists is, like, would be absolutely amazing. I mean, from some that you don't know, like Viva City, mm -hmm. amazing music, you know? And I'm already working with, like... Like even working with Julian K on the new record and 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 uh, doing the remix with them is a dream come true in the first place. Seeing as who they are, like wow, I never thought I'd ever ever one drum for them, two work with them with music, you know. Um, but like you know, I mean, seeing see Trent Reznor, of course, retired Nine Inch Nails, but that would have been an amazing. Thing to work with him on a track or two, you know, mm -hmm. and, and put something together and, and, and make it something something huge or whatever. Yeah. Something not necessarily uh, money wise, but I'm just talking huge as in wow, that's an epic experience. You know? yeah. But yeah. How can people find you right now? I mean, um, do you have any kind of website that you like to promote? Uh, or yeah, I mean, well, there's there's Facebook, you know, which is facebook.com forward slash Eli James Music. Then there's Eli James Music .com. Um, There's SoundCloud slash Eli James, Twitter slash Eli James. Pretty much any avenue, like if you go to YouTube slash Eli James Rocks. Um, yeah, pretty much anything like that. You know, Instagram is Eli James. Yeah, just like whatever. Okay. Search, yeah. All right, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cool. iTunes, CD Baby. <laughs> I have all my stuff up there. Actually, I just released an EP. Okay. My first solo EP ever. But it was um, it's put together as kind of like a collaboration with my fans and other people that want to listen to it. There's no real lyrics on the songs. Mm -hmm. It's more of like a journey of of, um, of a story. And the story has been put there through through sound, you know. Okay. And the challenge is is to have whoever wants to put a remix to it, and put um, you know put music videos to it, put lyrics to it, a poem, whatever they want to help collaborate the idea. So it's out now, like on iTunes, CD Baby, Amazon, and things like that. You can get digitally. I might release it as a physical copy later down the road. Um, I have a couple more, one called Simple Steps and another dance remix that I'm going to be doing this next year mm -hmm. that I'm putting out. Um, but anyway, but that's the EP. It's called Fashion and a Toy, and it's just to help. It's like to get, um, I guess, my fans and listeners more involved in the music as a musician and whatever they want to experience as well. Because in my opinion, nowadays, you just you get fed music mm -hmm. and people go, wow, I like that or I don't like it, yeah. which is completely awesome. But I want to create music to go, here's music will help me create it more. 
And there's all there's not an end to music. There's never an end to music. You can take someone's music and make it different. Yeah. You know, you can take a Picasso art painting, look at it, understand it, do your own as an influence to that. Everything can be influenced by everything else. You know what I mean? So that's what I did with Fashion and the Toys to go. I created this, sure, but help me create it further. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. All right. Well, I want to thank you for your time, man. Yeah, no worries. It was a blast and everything.